Yo, what's up? My name is Rich, and in this video right here, I'm going to show you some tips, tricks, I don't know what you want to call it, for uh, designing t-shirts in Photoshop and Illustrator when you have zero experience. And the reason being is because my cousin just started designing t-shirts, and he had zero experience, and he's doing great now. But he did have quite a bit of questions. A lot of them, I told him to look it up on YouTube and Google, but obviously there's just a few things that'll make it easier that I had to guide him with. And some things it's kind of hard to formulate into a question and look for it online. So I'm gonna go through a few things that he might have asked and a few things that I might have showed him. So uh, let's get straight into Photoshop and Illustrator. But right before we get into that, happy Thanksgiving or happy Thanksgiving week. I don't know when you're watching this, but um, I'm gonna show you a few Black Friday deals. So the first one is Vexels.com. Vexels has vector images, illustrations, all that type of stuff you need for your t-shirts. And of course, they have even more than that. They have mock-up generator, they have mock-ups, they have book covers, they have vectors. Of course, they have t-shirts. They have even have a t-shirt maker. So if you don't have Photoshop or Illustrator, you can do it right here. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. We can uh, select the t-shirt that we want. So we're in graphics. Let's go ahead and take a look around. Um, here's a cactus. Go ahead and put it on here. Check that out. Let's look for some text. Oh, they even have the warp for you. So that's awesome. Let's see. Don't. Oops. Be. Don't be. It's already warped. So if you don't know how to do that in Photoshop or Illustrator, check this out. I can even double click on the cactus, change the colors of the cactus that I wanted to if I wanted to. I think I just said the same thing twice, but it's all good um we can make it a darker green we can make it whatever color we want we can click apply let's go back to the text right here we're gonna make this a bold i'm gonna change this to maybe something like that oh i'm gonna put that right there i'm gonna add another text bring that down and put this right here warp down bold all right oops don't know what happened there but you know things like that happen don't let's make this smaller so check that out even if you don't have Photoshop or Illustrator you can make a t-shirt design right here on Vexels and you can click download you can save it whatever you need to do with it and they even have other t-shirt mock-ups all sorts of designs right here on Vexels and of course we're gonna go over here and read this because I know y'all always ask me these questions professional use license you get a license for every download made, allowing for professional use of our designs. And yes, you can use this for print on demand. So check this out. Up to 1,000 prints per design. Or you can come on over here if you want to really follow the business model. Up to 5,000 prints per design. But if you're doing 1,000 prints of 1,000 different things, man, who really needs more than 1,000? So 13 bucks a month, that's the Black Friday deal for that. But yeah, pretty dope, right? Check this out. Bring on 2021. Can't be much worse. Got a little um, toilet paper man right here. You can even click download on him. So I'm going to go ahead and download him and maybe we'll use this for the rest of the video. And other than that, Super Color is having a 20% off sale on Super Saturday. So this Saturday coming up, if you're watching it afterwards, I'm sorry, but still check it out down below. Still great prices for the Super Color transfers. Uh, click on the link down below. Go ahead and check out all the sizes and the dimensions that you can make your artwork. Go ahead and prep it up. Get it all ready. Uh, click on the link. Check it out. And once it's Saturday, just click upload and go ahead and purchase it be prepared but anyways let's go ahead and get straight into this video all right so here i am on photoshop i think for the most of this video we're going to use photoshop because that was where most of the questions were and also this video is going to be all over the place because i don't even know where to start because we had a whole bunch of questions first and foremost we got the pen tool all right so as i've mentioned this previously getting used to the pen tool just go ahead and start playing with it maybe even try to find a way to circle around an object to form the shape of it so you can get accommodated to it um as you can see i'm pretty much just pretty much i don't know just creating a shape with the letter b and once you select around it there's a few things you can do with the pen tool you don't even have to connect it to if you don't want to as of yet but you can right click hit make selection um hit okay and then i'm gonna hit a new layer down here now I'm going to get the paint bucket tool and I'm going to hold alt. That's a shortcut for the eyedropper. Um, so you can select what color you want. I'm going to go ahead and click this uh, dark purple right here. And I'm going to fill it in. Check that out. I got that selection from using the pen tool. But I'm going to go ahead and back it up real quick. Now we got our pen tool again. Now I'm going to go on over to our brush tool. And now of course our brush is a brush. But 
we want to right click and change the sizes of it um, this right here is how soft it is as you can see the edges of it in comparison to how hard it is as you can see the edges now straight up solid edge um so i'm gonna make this stroke maybe around here as you can see it's 12 pixels right now what i'm gonna do is go back to the pen tool right click and hit stroke path now you can use whatever tool you want right here but it's gonna go with the settings that you set for that tool so for the brush we just made it a solid uh, 12 point brush so now i'm gonna hit okay check that out now we got a 12 point uh brush you don't have to use that for a stroke uh, of the text itself but speaking of stroke let's go ahead and stroke this text which is an outline or an inline is that what you call it whenever you're doing an outline of the inside of the object i don't know but anyways let's go ahead and undo that um so i'm gonna hit magic wand like i said this video is all over the place i'm sorry but i'm doing my best i'm gonna hit magic wand um, one thing we want to look at up here is contiguous. I don't know if that's how you say it, but contiguous. Um, so if we check it, check this out. It's only going to select this color right here of this actual shape right here. Not everything of that color. However, if I want to select everything of that color, I uncheck it and I'm going to do it again. Check that out. That selects everything of that color. So if I want to delete everything of that color, I hit delete that deleted everything in that shade of blue now let's say i wanted to only delete this letter b in that color i go ahead and check contiguous hit delete and check that out i'm only deleting the letter b all right so now I undid that um we're gonna go back to what i was saying was the stroke so i'm gonna hit a new layer right here and i'm gonna hit g again for the paint bucket i'm gonna go ahead and uh, make a solid fill and it doesn't really matter what color it is because i'm not going to use that um, also, before I finish, remember, there's more than one way to practically do everything in Photoshop. So, now that I have that filled, I'm going to go on over here where it says Opacity and Fill. So, the Opacity deals with the entire transparency of the layer itself, as you can see right there. Um, it's the entire layer. The Fill, it might sound like the same thing, but we'll come back to it. So, anyways, let me go ahead and put it back to where it was and now i'm going to lower the fill completely down and now i'm going to double click on this layer and what that does is bring up this layer style window now this has a lot of options where you can do different things so um like i said earlier we just wanted to do a stroke that pretty much adds an outline to the text or whatever object is on that layer so as you can see this is the outside stroke we can uh, bring it up bring it down right here inside i call it an inline <laughs> so this pretty much deals with the stroke on the inside those holes are kind of giving me trypophobia i don't know if you know what that is but go ahead and google it and if you have it let me know down below all right so that's pretty much how you can create a stroke and there's all kinds of things in here here's a color overlay so you don't always have to use the paint bucket to deal with the color now i'm making it green let me uncheck that i can do a whole gradient right here um i can move it there's all kinds of stuff pattern as you can see, I have this super cool leaf pattern. Uh, check this out. If I make the stroke white, you can probably see it a little more. Of course you can. And leave the shadow there. So now you got a stroke. I'm just going to make it red for the sake of being able to see it. But like I was saying, the fill and the opacity is two different things. Now, if I lower the opacity, it's everything on that layer, including the layer style. The fill does not include the layer style. Got it? Good. All right, so what else did we get into? All right, so let me go ahead and... Okay, so this eyeball right here is for the visibility of the layer itself. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck both of those. Check this out. So the pen tool, once again, is very useful for all kinds of things. Actually, let me go ahead and bring this guy back. As you can see, there's a little shape right here. Let's imagine... Let's say we want to create a text in the same form of the toilet paper man. Um, I'm going to get our pen tool. I'm gonna start right there and I'm gonna go ahead and move it like around here or so I just undid that all right there we go now why did I make that because I want to create a text around that same thing all right now check this out so I'm gonna hit the letter T that's gonna bring up my text tool and I'm gonna take our cursor and as you can see right when I put it over the pen uh, outline that we made it turns into a different shape I'm gonna click on it and check that out now toilet paper man as you can see now the text can sit on that line that you created isn't that cool 
Um, I misspelled paper, but it's all good. You get the point. So I'm going to go ahead and make everything else invisible. And then I'm just going to mm, go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And I'm just going to hit T for text, of course. I'm going to go ahead and click on there. And we're going to type in toilet paper. I don't know if that's how you spell it. Toilet. Is that how you spell toilet? I hope I'm right. All right, so check this out. I got toilet paper written right here. This right here is the character toolbox. You can hit, I believe it's control T on uh, Windows to make it pop up. It's how you control your letting, your kerning, all of that. Practically, I don't even know which belongs to what, but I believe kerning is the uh, space in between letters or is that the letting? I have no idea. I can't remember these things. But um, this gives it a little bit more dynamic look to your actual text. So check that out. I'm moving the spacing around, moving the spacing here and there. And right here, this controls the sizing of the text. Make sure it's always at 100% on both sides, the height and the width, or else you're going to get something out of proportion. But there are times where you may need to use these things. So let's go ahead and take a look at when we might need to change the width and the height. So I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back to normal. Hit zero right there. Delete this. Go back. So right here up top, the letter T that sits on a little hill, I'm going to click on that. This is where you can warp your text. So I'm going to hit arc. This is how we create an arc, just like how we did earlier with Vexels. So I'm going to put it down to around 20-ish percent and check that out. Looks pretty good. So one reason why I brought up the uh, width and the height control. So on some fonts, it doesn't look as good. Let me type in a different one. So right here, um, I did the font impact and right here you can barely, barely tell, but it's slightly a little more squished than it should be. Let me go ahead and do more of a bend to exaggerate it. So let's say if I'm around 61%, see it, it's not as tall as the original font. So I can click back on it, go ahead and click on this, maybe bring it up to about 150. Now it looks similar to the original font. So as you can see, like times like this might be a good time where you want to control the size of the height instead of the width as well. So one other thing we did get into was aligning our objects. So as you can see, some of these items are like skewed to the left, not to the center, and all of that. It's all over the place, right? So we got three different text files. I'm going to go ahead and move this back. All right, so this one is the toilet paper curved. All right, so I'm going to click on our move tool, which is also a shortcut V um, right now. If you look up the top, there's these little alignment icons. I can't click on it, but if I click control all and select everything, now I can click on it. So this brings it to the center. This brings it to the right. This brings it to the left. You can't really tell because it's so large. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. All right. So now uh, I got my move tool again. I'm going to select everything and check this out. This lines it up to the left. This lines it up to the right. This lines it to the center. And now we have other text we want to line up as well. So what I'm going to do is hold shift, select one of the layers, and then go ahead and click on all of the layers by clicking on the last layer. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and click it again. And that's going to center everything. Isn't that awesome? Yes, it is. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope that helped you out. If you need more information on any of these things, the tools, whatever it was that I used, just use YouTube and search up that exact tool. I'm pretty sure there's thousands of content creators that has covered these things. And I know it is a lot to go through, but one by one, one day at a time, you can become a professional. And you don't even have to be a professional in this business. You just have to know enough to get you that money. So yeah, stay hustling, stay thankful. My name is Rich. I'll see you next time.